Good morning everybody from Hanoi, Vietnam. Good morning. Today we're gonna to be doing some more exploring, but first we're gonna start with some coffee. more this is way more like coffee like strong compared to like the coconut coffee we had yesterday at Kong Cafe so pretty good and refreshing because it is kind of hot outside even though it's cloudy all right so this is called you know coffee and they're known for just having all kinds of sticky notes all around everything is literally covered in it it's like their decor like there's no wall <laughs> just notes Trying to figure out what to write. Um, so let's start off with from. And then. Dates. Oh, today is March 15th, which makes it our two month anniversary of traveling full time. Moses figured it out, and this is what we wrote. This note says that February 3rd was day one of their seven month Southeast Asia adventure. Wow, that's so, amazing. <laughs> Chris and Elise, wherever you guys are, the best of luck, and hopefully we'll cross paths. We found a place on the wall, and uh, if you guys see our notes and you come here to uh, Hanoi, let us know, send us a picture at, on our Instagram at Moses and Yeah. I'll try to go as high as I can. Hopefully not cover anybody else. <laughs> Added one more little note, way high up. <laughs> well, as high as I can reach. <laughs> Coffee didn't really hit the spot, so we're gonna go get some egg coffee. Before stopping at the egg coffee shop that's right next door, we came to get some rubs. We ordered a chocolate with mango. This looks really good and it costs $50,000. Thanks, Tasty. Hello, Tasty. Hello, Good. I've never had it before with the mango, but it's a really nice combination. Mm. Which one do you want? Uh, the one with the house, or whatever that is. <laughs> We spent just a little too much time at the coffee shops enjoying our books once again. But now we're gonna race over to the Hanoi Hilton before it closes in like an hour and a half and uh, see if our Hilton gold status works over there.
the car was right in front of me. I know. I'm more scared of the cars than the actual bikes. <laughs> it looks like it is starting to rain. Uh, we walked out of the coffee shop and realized how much more humid it is. And, yep, it's drizzling. So we are headed to the Hilton Hanoi, as it's known. Um, it's not actually a Hilton. It's actually where prisoners of war were kept uh, during the Vietnam slash America war. When it comes to the Vietnam War, we already know the American perspective, and now we know the South Vietnam perspective of the war. And I think now we get to learn the North perspective of the war. Admission tickets are 30,000 dong each, which is about $1.25. So that was a very interesting museum and this prison actually dates back to French colonial times and was built by the French to house Vietnamese political prisoners and later on during the Vietnam America War it was used to house American prisoners of war. Um, I think the museum in South Vietnam that we visited, the War Remnants Museum, did a better job of presenting facts and just kind of letting you form your own opinion whereas this one was definitely trying to steer you towards a certain opinion. Um, I think uh, if you were to ask American prisoners of war, <laughs> I think if you were to ask uh, American prisoners of war about their experiences, their retelling would be a little different than the one depicted here. But uh, we also believe that everyone should look at all the information and form their own opinions. Uh, so we won't say much more than that. This also wasn't a very gory. This also wasn't a very gory museum. Uh, we kind of expected it would. We kind of expected it would just because all the other museums we've seen were kind of gory. Um, but there wasn't really any of that here. What I found, like, so this is where the actual prison, like, was. And that just seems really impressed because we can walk through it right now and see where these prisoners of war were held. I don't know, it's just like being here and actually seeing the history and like walking through it, it just leaves a different impression on me. Like, stuff that I never knew. But we have some big plans for dinner tonight, so we're gonna just go get a little light snack for now uh, while we do some work, and we're gonna save our appetites for later. We got our afternoon pick-me-up from King Roti, and they're actually out of the vanilla ones, so we got a matcha roti and a chocolate roti chocolate coffee about the so we're gonna try those out in a minute good evening everybody um, we are headed out for dinner right now and originally our plan yesterday was gonna be to do an AI guided food tour but since its database hasn't been updated in uh, two years um, doesn't know the latest information on restaurants and we couldn't find most of them um, and when we looked in and when we looked into food tours, we'd already tried all the food and tried about half of the restaurants that they would take us to. But in our TikTok and YouTube research, we did end up finding one really cool restaurant that we really want to check out. And the only place we could find it was on TikTok. And when you look at their Google Maps listing, the website that they have listed for the business is that one TikTok. So we're going to go check out that business. So to order, you just look at the Vietnamese name that they have printed here and write it down on an order slip. They just made a table sauce lemon juice tray with some chili and it looks like salt or some other spices, maybe, uh, maybe sugar in this bowl. We'll see uh, how this comes in handy later. <laughs> 
incredible. I wasn't expecting that labor to be put right in front of me. I almost felt like, you know, it's okay. I could squeeze the lemons. All right, we got the salad. I think with our meal, we get like a uh, courses. Uh, I think we get four. So, He fed Moses. Incredible service, they even mouth feed you. <laughs> okay, so now we learn how to eat this. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, this is really unique. Um, I would have never guessed that that's how you eat it if you haven't shown us, but it was really good. How I would have guessed is that this is like a salad that we dress with some lemon juice, and then you put tofu on top of some rice and eat it. <laughs> okay, yeah, you know what, that's super helpful. Yeah. Wow. This has a very authentic flavor. It's amazing. I love the sauce too. Yeah, that's really nice and spicy. It's like, cool. I'm like, it's a little sour. Yeah, because you put lime in it. But it like balances out really well. It's amazing. And then look at how much food we have. <laughs> and they also just brought out our first plate. Um, ordering two separate meals might have been a mistake because we already have a ton of food. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so there's a lot of food on our plate. I thought this was the side dish. Turns out it's the main meal because I really like that tofu. Honestly. And this was just a side. The soup is a side, the salad's a side, the rice is a side, and here's my dish. Yeah. <laughs> they serve you like a Vietnamese family the soup, the veggie, the protein. This is amazing. <laughs> I'm like, I'm scared it would be so full. We just finished a wonderful meal at the Katse Vegan and Vegetarian Restaurant. That was really good. I'm really feeling we're both stuff and there was still a lot of food left. Yeah. Um, we could have probably gotten away with one meal, um, but I don't regret our two meals. Right. After your meal, he gives you a printout that has uh, his whole life story and kind of explaining what got him to this point. And he went from being a poor street kid to now he runs a restaurant. And he actually works his second job as a grab driver so that he can raise more money and help other street kids. Um, so that's his whole goal behind running his restaurant and working his second job is he wants to help more street kids uh, have better futures. So if you're in Hanoi, absolutely check this place out. That was a fantastic meal. Every single thing was so good. And you're also supporting a great cause by eating here. The entrance is kind of hidden. Just kind of look for this business and these signs and the little doorway, alleyway right next to it all. Every time we pass by a nice hotel on our trip, uh, we play a little game to try and figure out how much it costs and then we look it up. This is a four-star hotel, really bright, looks really nice and new from the outside. The lobby looks really nice. So what do you think? I think the most for this, for like one room, is like $200. That's how much I'm guessing, 200 a night. I'm guessing probably like 150. Yeah. Let's check Google. Okay. Um, it's actually only 1.4 million dong per night, which is like 50 bucks. That is, that's a that seems like a good deal. <laughs> yeah, I'm paying 30 dollars a night here at my little Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> if I if we wanted to spend an extra 30 dollars a night, that's where it would be. <laughs> there was one place that shocked us in Siem Reap. That was right across from the night market. We we're both guessing like you know, 100, maybe 200. Pulled up and it was 450 a night. <laughs> I mean, it looked like they had gold statues in there and everything, so mm -hmm. I'm sure those places deliver. Yeah, they had a huge, really gorgeous spa, but uh, for 450 a night. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a bunch of different routes back to our Airbnb, but pretty much every route involves going through some kind of crazy bar, club street. Yeah. <laughs> These places are kind of crazy. They're kind of like uh, pushy though. That, I mean, I don't know if like that's a tactic that works, but I don't know, like grabbing people, you know, like encourage them to eat at your restaurant. <laughs> 
grabbing me encouraging me to want to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> Like, this is really disrespectful. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> not falling for it. Yeah, wrong uh, clientele. That was yet another interesting and fun and overall great day here in Hanoi, Vietnam. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow for the next adventure. See you tomorrow. Bye.